Hello, this is Kevin Zoon, Creative Director of Octodad Deadliest Catch. Uh, today I'm going to walk you through the basics of using the Octodad Editor to make levels for the workshop. So, first thing we need to know, physics objects. You can see that the game starts with at least one physics object here. This giant box. Uh, let's play this and find out. You can play the game in Editor by clicking on this blue triangle or hitting F5. So, nothing much yet. Just acted add in a square. Oh, great. So, we want more going on here than a giant square. Let's make another box. So, we want to right click on the root here. We want to add physics object. Looks like a Minecraft cube. Don't tell Notch. So, here we have this lovely box. It's currently invisible and does nothing. Good for it. But, we can add a model by going to the Asset Library under Tools. You can see all of the models in the game here rotating around. So you can find pretty much anything in here. We don't need this for now though, we'll just stick with the box. Under Editor, the basic box. You can click and drag this into this box called the Mesh File Name. Alright, now it has a mesh and it will draw in game. As you can see, there it is, floating in space. So if we want it not to float in space doing nothing, we should probably change its physics state. Physics state is very important. There are three of them. Static, which the box is currently, just completely stays in place and never moves. And do not try to make it move. Uh, kinematic also stays in place, but it can be animated. Uh, I'll get into that more later. And then dynamic, probably the most prolific kind of object. It interacts with physics and uh, can be kicked around by Octodad and the like. Ha. Ha. Some other things we're going to want to cover about this object before we get too far. One, we can switch over to the Materials tab. It's getting kind of hard to see this white box against a white floor. So we can go to its diffuse color here and switch it to a lovely green. It'll stick out a lot better now. For instance, there it is. So, uh, a couple other properties we want to use a lot. Grabability. If grabable is set to true, then Octa can pick it up with his arm tentacle. Woo! Uh, we have is gold. We have a lovely gold shader for trying to make objects look important in the game. We have is trip hazard, which is used for bananas and slippery puddles. It's an object that causes Octa to trip and slip when he steps on it. And another very useful state here, turn dynamic on touch. So if you have a box that is kinematic, it can become dynamic under certain conditions, one of which is this turn dynamic on touch. So if we play the game, it's kinematic, it's locked in space until Octodad touches it. Now it's dynamic. This can, pretty, this can be pretty useful if you have an object that you really want to stay in place until the player needs to interact with it. Okay, so the next thing we need to make our level work is a trigger object. So triggers, you can add one by right-clicking add and going to trigger object. It's a green cube. You can see this little guy here. So uh, we'll want to scale this up. You can scale by hitting R to bring up the scale widget. W brings up translation, and E is rotation. You can also use these icons up here. 
Anyway, a trigger object takes in a certain condition and then causes an event to happen. It's basic scripting logic in cube form. So for instance, let's say we want to change the properties of this green block here. Let's say that it is not grabbable, for instance, but that we want it to become grabbable. So here in on trigger event, we're going to want to choose from this wide variety of options. There's a lot here. We're going to stick to set object property for now. So set object property allows us to change the properties of an object like this box. However, in order to make this work, this box needs to have an ID number. Here in ID, we can set it to, oh, say 100. Now we can refer to the number 100 to be in this box. So the object property we, do, property we want to change is 100. And the property we want to change, not visibility, grabbable. We want to set it to true. So that's on trigger event. Now we've got the trigger condition, which is when we should set it to grabbable. Right now it's set to immediately which means that it happens right away. As you can see, triggers are not visible in the game because they're abstract. However, if you want to see them at work, you can go to Options and hit Log Trigger Events. Whoops, that's not what I meant. Trigger Debug Mode. There, there trigger debug mode. You can see that this trigger has gone off because it is green. If it had not gone off it would be red. But immediately is not very useful for this. So what we want is anything else really. The simplest is on player collide. That means if Octodad enters this cube the event will occur. Let's try it out. You can see it's red because it hasn't triggered yet. The cube cannot be grabbed. I enter the trigger. And the cube can be grabbed. It's a miracle. Now, if we want this trigger to do more than one thing, and we often do, we can add new trigger events by creating trigger event objects. So, this time we're going to want to add as a child a trigger event object, this green arrow. Adding as a child means that the two are linked together. So whenever the parent object moves, the child object also moves, as you can see. So this trigger event object, we can set a new thing to happen. Let's set object property 100. What else do we want to change about this box? Let's say we want to make it gold. Now, when we enter the trigger, it becomes gold and grabbable. Okay, now the next thing we probably want to make this level work are cameras. Cameras are very important. By default, you use this kind of awful camera that swivels with A and D. We don't like to use it because it doesn't really help guide the player where they need to go. Guidance is one of the most important design problems we needed to solve in Octodad, so... We need to add a camera trigger volume, which, true to its name, is a trigger volume, much like this one, except that it only works with cameras. We are very good at naming things. So, let's make this the size of... a little bit bigger. Uh, so the camera trigger volume needs a camera object to go with it. So let's add a camera object. This, like the box, is going to need its own ID. Let's give it 200. So let's position this camera where we, where we want it to go. 
right behind Dr. Dad looking at his lovely head. And set the ID here in camera ID in the camera trigger volume. Paying attention. So you can see the camera is different now. I cannot swivel it around. I can only nudge it. As long as Dr. Dad is inside of this volume, the camera will be like this. If I step outside, however, it will return to that default camera. If I step back inside, transitions. Now, important features to keep in mind for the camera object and camera volume. There is a camera transition speed, which determines how fast the camera flies into place. Oftentimes you want this to be decently slow, 0.5 or 1, just so that the player is not sickened by rapid camera transitions. You don't want it to be super long or, well, it'll take forever and be really boring. You can set the camera transition to 0 in order to create an instant cut camera, which can be very useful. Now if I step back inside of here, you can see that the camera cuts instantly. So, this is only one kind of camera though, the stationary camera. It stays in place. Currently the camera target mode is set to default, meaning that it just points wherever the object is pointing. However, we can set it to look at Octodad specifically, or an object ID we set. For instance, the box. Now if we set it to follow Octodad, the camera will stay in place, but it will rotate in order to keep Octodad at the center of the screen. You tend to want Octodad to be on the screen at all times so the players know how to control him. Keep that in mind. Another useful camera type that we can cover right now is the fixed angle camera. There are other kinds of cameras, such as the spline camera, that are very useful, but a bit more complicated, so we'll get into them later. The fixed angle camera will keep one set angle between it and Octodad and follow him around. So I just jump in like this. If I move left, the camera comes with me. Right, forward, back, it's all the same. It will maintain that exact distance and angle. This is a very quick solution if you've got a nice open level. It's not the best camera to use in a room with walls because the camera might clip through the walls constantly. Now if we rotate the camera, you can change its viewing angle to be a, a little bit less head-on. And that about covers basic cameras. You can have more than one volume in more than one camera. And it's wise to, in order to set up the right camera for each scene. But moving on. It's about time we allow the player to actually win this game. So, let's make a new trigger. We're going to move it over here. Make it pretty big. So, let's set a condition for actually winning the level. In this case, how about on object inside, and let's pick that lovely box 100. So, when this box goes inside of this trigger, the events will happen. Now to end the level, let's create a trigger event. And very simply, end level. As long as you don't set a next level, it will go back to the main menu, which you'll want for mods. But it would behoove us to tell the players how to beat this level. So, and whether they beat it, that is also important. Feedback. So for one thing, we should probably get a sound object. 
this lovely red ball. Now in that asset library I showed you earlier, you can also have sounds in addition to the model library. Now all of the useful sounds are here in Octodad 2. Uh, the rest are leftovers, so try to ignore them. For instance, I could go in levels to look for some lovely level sounds. Amazon, let's grab this eel start noise. Uh, you won't be able to hear this because of the recording I'm using, but believe me, it sounds very triumphant. So I can grab this eel start pull it into the event name for the sound. Now, sound needs an ID, since we're going to reference it with a trigger. So, simple event for this, pretty self-explanatory, is play sound. Pick the sound ID 300. So, when I run into this trigger, or when I take the box inside, it will play the sound and end the level. Unfortunately, it does them both at the same time right now, so the level will end before they even get to hear it. So we should use this event delay. Let's set it to three seconds, let's say. That means that after this trigger goes off, it will wait three seconds before ending the level. Very useful. So let us also use this objective object to tell the players how to win. So our description will be bring box to the front. Terrible description, but it'll work. This will also need an ID. Now, it's set to is revealed, which means that when we play the game, you can see it down at the bottom there. Bring box to the front. If it were not revealed, it would show nothing. You can use the not revealed status to have multiple objectives which don't show up until they're necessary. But for now, we're going to create a trigger event object for the objective change objective ID 400 we're going to set it to complete that means when I hit the trigger the objective will complete let's take this other trigger and move it a bit further forward about there. So, hit this trigger. Fox becomes grabbable. I grab it. Bring it with me to the front. And you can see the objective complete. And I've won the level. So with physics objects, cameras, triggers, objectives, and sounds, those are all the basics that you need to make a level work in Octodad. Alright. Hope you learned something.